So far in this course, we've been working with standard Swift data types like string, double, boolean, int, etc. But there are cases where we want something a little more complicated, uh, and that can get troublesome pretty quickly. So let me just go ahead and um, erase this from my playground. I have a structures playground. So let's say I wanted to model something like uh, a student, for example. So I could have a, let's see, I could let I could have a student one name equal, let's say, Joe. And I could have let student two name equal Sally. And I could have let student, whoops, student one grade equal nine, let student two grade equal 12. And you can see that keeping track of all these variables is going to become very cumbersome. So there are actually a couple of better ways to organize your code if you need to describe a more complicated data structure. And the first one we're going to talk about is called a structure. And the way I define a structure is by the use of the keyword struct. Oops. And struct indicates I'm about to make a structure. You can name a structure essentially anything you want. Convention is to make the name of your structure with a capital letter. So I'm going to, to define a student and then I use the curly braces to indicate the opening and closing of the structure. So now if I wanted to make a student I could say let's uh, student one equal student. And I have made an instance of a student. Now it's not very exciting uh, because there's no information there, but that's the basic format of how you would create a structure and then create an instance of that structure. Well, a struct can have uh, variables. So I could have a variable like name. And I know that name is going to be a string. I could have a structure like grade, and grade is going to be an int. So now if I wanted to instantiate a student one, I could say student with a name of Joe and a grade of nine. And I've made a student. If I wanted to view information about the student, I could do print student one, oops, student one dot name. Wait for it to catch up. And if I run it, I get Joe. So it prints out that name. Actually, I'm going to do one thing. I'm just going to turn this off so it goes manually. So I can do that manually so it doesn't crash as often. If I wanted to create another student, I could say let student two equal student name Sally grade 12. And I could print student two dot grade. And then if I ran that, I would get 12. So it looks like I'm creating two instances of students, which is a very nice way to organize it. So I can have instance variables, and I can also have instant methods, instance methods. So let's just make a very simple one. I'll use function greeting. It'll take no parameters and return nothing. And I will say something like print name, whoops, let me put the print name is in grade 12 and says hello. So now if I do let me erase this. 
I can call student one dot greeting. And I'll erase this and I'll put student two dot greeting. Let's go ahead and run that. And it gives me the information in my very simple instance method. So everything is working so far. So each time I create a new instance of my structure, I'm actually initializing the different values of the variables. And all Swift data types have an initializer. And those initializers set variables to a default value if they're not otherwise described. So for example, I can write this var name, well, let's not do name, let's do city equals two empty quotes. And what that does is that sets the variable city to a blank string. I could also write that as string dot init. And what that does is that initializes the string to just a blank string, the same way I wrote it before with two empty quotes. You don't often see this because it's a lot easier just to write this. But know that there are default initializers for each variable type that you can create. So when I create a new instance, I need to set the values for these properties. So if we look back here, when I did student one and student two, I set the name equal to Joe and the grade equal to nine and the name Sally and the grade 12. These are called member wise initializers because I'm initializing each member variable of that structure. I can also create custom initializers uh, if I want to create things like default values. So let's take a look at what that might be. Uh, let's go ahead and add a couple properties in here. If I'm going to represent a student, I want to know how many credits they have and what their GPA is going to be. So I'm going to add a very, oops, variable called credits. And it's going to be an int. And I'm going to also do, whoops, I'm going to do a, a variable called grade points. For, so I can calculate GPA, which I'm going to use of type double. And you notice now I'm, it says I'm, I'm missing an argument for this parameter. So in many cases, when I am a student going to a new school, especially to high school, I typically enter in ninth grade, in which case I probably don't have any credits yet and no grade points since I haven't really started. But if I come in at another grade, I may already have some credits and grade points. So I need to initialize those two students in slightly different ways. So I can do that by using custom initializers. So I can make my own INIT method and I can say, well, I'm going to have the name be a string, grade be an int, credits will also be an int, grade points will be a double. So that means I am going to accept as parameters all the information about a student. And I would use this if I was coming in in a grade other than ninth. So now what I need to do is I'm taking these parameters, I need to assign whatever these values are to these instant variables, instance variables. So I need to go name equals name because this is variable is called name and this parameter is called name and you can see that I'm getting an error because it doesn't know which name I'm talking about. So in order to differentiate, I use the keyword self and self.name refers to the self or the name that is of the instance. This name is coming from the parameter. Now I could have avoided that if I put uh, like first, and then I could make this first and taken out self. But this happens often enough that it's sometimes easy just for clarity's sake to keep the parameters the same and use self to differentiate between the two. So I can go ahead and use and assign the rest of these. S 
and then self dot credits equals credits and then self dot grade points equals grade points. So in this case, I have initialized each different variable. Well, let's say I have a student who's coming in ninth grade and they would have, I know they're coming in ninth grade. I know that they have zero credits and their grade points are going to be zero. So I don't need to type in that same information all the time. So I can make a custom initializer that only takes the name. Whoops. So then I can do self dot name equals name. And then I can manually set self.grade to equal nine, since they know they're a ninth grader. Self.credits is going to equal zero. And self.grade points is going to equal 0, 0.0 since it's a double. So by only passing in one piece of information, I'm manually assigning all these values to these variables. So I can update Joe since Joe is a ninth grader, to simply Joe. And I can change this. Now, again, I'm getting an error because I don't have enough parameters. So I can add the parameters credits. Uh, let's say 10. And grade points. I'll make that 33 grade points. And now if I do student one, let's say, I, let's go ahead and print student one dot credits. I'll run that and I get zero. If I do student two, let's see, print student two dot credits. I get 10. So these values are successfully being passed on to the instance variables.